Trinity God's concept is not easy for us to understand because this concept is not popular and is not <clears throat> possible in human thought because of this complexity because of its complexity many wrong teachings on the concept of trinity have practiced in the christian history and also many different cultic you know cultic c u l t i c cultic and heretic h e r e heretic okay heretic heretic teachings and doctrines were created out of this the trinity concept as a result many different denominations as a result many different denominations had theological dispute over this issue even today on this doctrine many christian communities got divided in spite of in spite of the difficulties in understanding the trinity doctrine it is the key it is the key doctrine that we have to understand in order to practice christianity without the clear understanding of this doctrine it is impossible for us to understand true christianity and also all other christian doctrines would be interpreted wrongly wrong way not in perfect way or incorrect way in other words if you don't understand the doctrine of trinity other doctrines in christianity cannot be understood in right way you understand what i'm saying yes, yeah therefore the doctrine of trinity is the basic fundamental doctrine in understanding the christianity trinity means trinity means trinity means three three it unity means unity three three r unity means what one okay so three equals one kind of concept so we call it triune god triune god this means also one god but in three persons this is the one god in three persons there are some illustrations for us to understand but these are not perfect illustrations for our easy understanding 
three examples, not three, I would say, I'll give you one example first, okay? By drawing, first by drawing, is one God, but he has three, three parts. It's not perfect way for us to understand, okay? The one God, it concept is one God, but has three, I would say, bodies. One head and three bodies, like that. But it's not perfect. But it's just, just for our understanding, okay? And second, uh, it's not perfect, but now here, I would say uh, ice. Ice, okay. Ice is what? Uh, it's it's a, it's a, it's a solid solid substance, okay. Ice, but it's a liquid form is what? Water. Ice and water. And how about you boil the water? You have a steam. Like it's three. Same substance, but in three different forms. Got it? Would you write that down, that part? Like ice, water, and steam. Same substance, but in three different forms. It, it appears... It appears to us in three different forms, but the essence, substance, is the same. Three persons means you put down three functions. Three functions. These three functions, three, these three persons. I, I would say not have, okay? It has, it's a singular. Okay, I put down singular, okay? Has the same quality. I put down same quality. And same quantity. Hmm? And same power. And same position. Same authority. Same vision. And same thought. Yet different. function, different functions. You, I told you many times, Father God, Father God has what function? It's a planner. Double N? Planner. Son God is what? Executor. Executor means what? Doer. Huh? Doer. doer or practitioner. Huh? Yes. And doer. And the Holy Spirit, God? Okay, power giver. Okay, power giver. It's a different, different. That's a, in in within this Holy Spirit, there are two two functions. One is one is what. This is a Holy Spirit power giver or enabler. Within this Holy Spirit, we have pneuma. 
You, are, you, are you following me? Punyuma. Punyuma God is what? Punyuma God within you, inside. Okay? Within, inside, in, in your, in our heart. When you receive the Punyuma Holy Spirit, then what? You will receive eternal life. Okay? It's a, it's what spirit? It's a saving, saving spirit, saving Holy Spirit. After you receive the salvation, then God will give you special gift called para. Paracletus. Paracletus is outside or inside? Outside. It's outside. Outside of, outside. It, outside of, okay? Then what is the name of the Paracletus? There are many. Counselor and Advocator. And comforter and helper and encourager and so on. In Genesis one one said God created the heavens and earth. In Genesis 1 1, God created heavens and earth. In this case, God in Hebrew, in Hebrew, says, Elohim. Whenever, whenever Bible says God, God, that means Elohim. Elohim means Creator. Also, Elohim, Elloh is a singular, that's one God. Elloh. Okay, this is actually singular. But when you have I am at the end, that means what? Plural. Always. When I am, like in English, like S, it's actually Elohim actually should be pronounced, should be translated in God. It should be like that. Write that down, okay? Elohim actually translate literally into God. It should be that way. But in, in, in Hebrew, it says, God, Elohim, not Elo. They put him Elohim, plural. So in translation in English, should be God, right? But it translates God, singular translation. This is a singular. But our Christian Bible, Never, had never translated, never translated, it never translated, God, always God, singular. It is because when we say God, singular there, that God implies this Father God, Son God, 
the Holy Spirit God inside. Here again, let's go back to Genesis 1.1, said, In the beginning, God created heavens and earth. Then you think, what? Who created? Father God, Son God, or Holy Spirit? Three persons. Okay? Use that language, okay? Three persons, God, participated in the creation. Three persons of God were participated in the creation. Father God as a planner. Son God as executor. Okay? And the Holy Spirit God as what? Power giver. They had they have different functions. Functionally different. But they have same power, authority, position, quality, quantity, equal. So for us to understand the creation, creation account, we would say, well, the Trinity God had a had a committee and they decided to create heavens and earth. Father God acted. Father God acted as a chairman, chairperson. After they finally decided to create, Father God hit the Chairman's, what you call that? Chairman's, you know, there's a little, little hammer. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Father God held the chairman's hammer and say, bang, bang, bang. It carried. Okay, that decision was carried. As a planner, that doesn't mean. Father God is higher than Son God and the Holy Spirit God. That's a different from our concept here. Okay? Same equal power, equal position, but they three persons. They always cooperate and respect and honor each other. But Always consult each other. Now, change the paragraph. After they, the heavens and earth, which became the official their decision, then who will actually? Create. Okay? Actual doer is who? Sun God. Actual doer is Sun God. With whose power? The Holy Spirit God will provide him the power. To create the heavens and earth. The Holy Spirit will provide. But from the creatures, from the creatures view, this is important part. You know creatures? Creatures means the one who are being made, being created. Creator is what? They are creators. Okay? All others are creatures. Creatures. Creator 
and creatures. Can you see the difference here? Okay. From creatures view, from creatures view, actually, who are creator? Huh? No. Who actually made this computer? Huh? The creatures only see Jesus. Who created them? Creatures cannot see beyond. They only see the actual God who, who created them. Now, such as this. For example, you here, you say, well, you say, Dr. Wang, we need a new whiteboard here. You told me, okay? But you didn't tell me, you told uh, our office downstairs. Then our office, we will have a committee whether we will provide you the whiteboard or not. Okay? Anyway, we committee decided to say such as me as a father God, okay, and and others and so on and so on. Actually, after we make decision, actually, our brother Bong, Pastor Bong, will come out. He will he will put new board here, and you will say, you will say, oh, I say, who brought, who brought this? And then Pastor Bong, you will say that. You will not say Brother Wang or Dr. Wang, whatever. Okay? Pastor Bong. Because Pastor Bong, I am the Father God, he is the Jesus God. In the same way, actual making, creating was done by who? Jesus. So Jesus, Jesus relates. Jesus relates to creatures, direct. Jesus directly relates to creatures. Father God is where? Father God dwells in the throne in his glory. Okay? Father God, no one can see. No one means no creatures can see Father God. He is behind. Write it down that part. Creatures cannot see who? Father God. Even after we, after we arrive in heaven later, okay, we cannot see, creatures cannot see Father God direct. Only Son God will come to us in many different ways. In his form, sometimes in a form of angel, in a form of human, in a form of all different ways. He will come to us and talk to us and relate to us. So, here, that's the reason we call Sun God as our our what? Our, our master. Our Lord. We would never call Father God as our master or our Lord. 
because the sun god got involved in our and your daily life as our master okay and our what your life our lord and later say jesus say i am your friend and the later say i am your savior so when you say our savior means who father god no the holy spirit god no jesus god so when we praise him praise whom actually we praise jesus because the jesus is only relate to us along with the holy spirit the holy spirit also available to us but in a person form you know like our looking the jesus is the very god for us to relate directly to so in our praise music so we praise what we praise him we praise our lord jesus like that right yeah there are many many names of jesus i will give you some names of jesus in the old testament in the old testament name jehovah jehovah means a, a covenant covenant god what do you mean by covenant covenant it's covenant means it's a contract legal contract contract making god Jehovah means don't forget contract making god covenant it's a legal it's not a, just a promise it's not a promise is just a, you know between you and me just talking but covenant means covenant means it's a legal a legal promise what you require to legal promise you need a sign signature and what seal and signature huh stamp seal means stamping and signature that you cannot cancel it that means covenant okay promise is just by word promise can be broken but covenant cannot because you sign and seal meaning what covenant don't forget that so jehovah means covenant making god then what covenant what covenant this is a jesus covenant is this i will die on the cross for your sins i will shed my blood through which you shall receive eternal life so i will shed my blood for your eternal life for that reason i will give you my name jehovah so when you when you when you read when you read jehovah when you hear jehovah then you should smell the blood of jesus and you should relate that to the calvary the cross on the calvary now in the old testament 
in the Old Testament, you would, you would see many cases, Jehovah God says so. Like, it just now putting two names, Jehovah God, or God Jehovah, whatever. Jehovah God says so. It has uh, two names linking together. Jehovah God says so. Then, what, what meaning implied inside there? I told you already. Jehovah means what? Covenant of God. Covenant what? So when you read Jehovah means, oh, blood. You have to smell blood of Jesus. He's a sacrificial death. A turning death there. Okay? That's Jehovah there. And God is what? God means creator. Don't forget that. So now it has a double implications inside. Now, creator God who died for me on the cross. Can you see that dynamics right there? Write that down. Creator God, such a, such a powerful, magnif magnificent, okay? Such a sp splendor, splendorous, big, power holding God incarnated himself into human form. He died on the cross in order to give us eternal life. So in the name Jehovah God carries that powerful name. Not only the powerful name, very humble name, creator God. Huge we cannot even measure his size. Okay? Powerful God transformed himself into a powerless human. That only we can explain this love of God. Because of the love of God, he transformed himself into that such the powerless, helpless human. Only love of God can explain this transformation. So when you read the Bible, when you meditate the word of God, Jehovah God, Jehovah God, then you meditate the Jehovah God, Jehovah God. So when you say Jehovah God means who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament. Also, Jehovah Zireh. Zireh. You know? Jehovah Zireh. What is it? It's a provider. Now you search now here, you put down this. Jehovah means what? His cross, okay? His sacrificial atoning death here. Jesus who died on the cross for me, but also he will he is a God. He would he will he will provide my daily daily needs. Huh? Write it down. I always ask you, write it down, write it down. This is not Father God. Okay? This is Jesus God. But who is behind the Jesus? Father God and the Holy Spirit God. How about Jehovah? Shalom. Peace. He provides us a peace. How about Jehovah Rapha? Healer. How about Jehovah 
Kimi mo? Nisi. Victory. Hmm? And we have more Old Testament names. Hmm? Shekino. Shekino is it's a glory. Shekino, glory. I will give you more names later. I will, one day I will handle all the names of God, but not today. One more in Isaiah chapter 7, 14 said that Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. Emmanuel. What is it? God is with us. That means through Isaiah, Jesus spoke to Isaiah. Jesus spoke to Isaiah. Why? Jehovah spoke to Isaiah. Then who spoke to Isaiah? Jesus. Jesus spoke to Isaiah saying that a baby will be born out of a virgin. And the baby's name will be Emmanuel. Emmanuel means what? God is with us. God is from our creature's view. God now is in with our, our, our society, in our human community, in a, in a bodily form. El means what? God. Immanuel. Hmm? God is with us. These three persons of God respect each other. And they are very humble. They are very humble God each other. They, they do not, they do not speak for themselves. In other words, they don't sell themselves. They don't sell themselves. In other words, I am the Father God. Jesus will not say, I am the Son God. They will not, they will not say, they will not sell. They will not promote. They will not brag. You know, brag themselves. They always hide themselves in a very humble mind and they allow other person other person of God witnessing to witness witness themselves for example I will give you examples okay for example as Jesus as Jesus came to this world, as Jesus came to this world, he had never told, he had never told people that he is God. He is the God and the Son of God himself. Even people well, even when he healed the sick people Some people said (coughs) 
you may be a son of God. But he said, don't tell people about it. He tried to <coughs> try not to reveal his identity <coughs> to his people. He expected Father God reveals, he expected to Father God reveals son's identity. So when Jesus was taking baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, even John the Baptist was not sure who this man was. John the Baptist had a, a slight, he had a slight idea of his identity. But he was not 100% sure. At the time, Trinity God appeared in the Jordan River and Son God was taking baptism and then the Holy Spirit God descending down in a form of Dove, in a form of a dove, D-O-V-E, okay? And the voice of Father God, the voice of Father God came down by saying, this is my Beloved Son, and open your bracket, Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. So Father God, the Father God, so Father God witnessed, would testified the Son God. to John the Baptist. And later, in Matthew 17, later, in Matthew 17, in the transfi transfiguration, in the transfiguration, transfiguration experience, You know meaning transfiguration? Father God, Father God's voice was heard by Peter, James, and John. That this is my Beloving son. This is my beloving son. Chapter 17, verse 5. Matthew. Matthew, chapter 17, verse 5. Jesus God had never said himself that I am the son of God. But when
one day before his crucifixion, Jewish high priest was asking, they were asking Jesus, are you a son of God? And Christ And he replied back to them by saying, You have said that. You have just said that. Which is an indirect way of his identity expression. Father God would never say himself, he, Father God would never, would never tell creatures that, creatures his identity, that I am the Father God. Jesus was the Jesus was the person who witnessed we who gave testimony who gave testimony on father God in John chapter 316 you know that Father God sent me. Also in John 5.37. He said, Father God sent me. So Jesus always telling us that he came to this world Because Father God sent me. Expressing his respect to Father God. Then who will witness Jesus? No. Who will? Hmm? Then who will witness the Holy Spirit God? Write that down. Now he say, Father God witnessed Jesus, right? And Jesus witnessed who? Father God. Then who will witness the Holy Spirit God? He will send? No, Jesus, Jesus did not say he will send. Jesus say, he will, I will Ask Father God. Yes. You see? Yes. Very humble God our God is. Although they are equal, same power, they always respect others. That's a Christian, that's a Christian spirit. <laughs> Jesus said, I will ask in John chapter 14:16 John chapter 14 verse 16 he would say I will ask Father God to give you what the para kletos holy spirit now Continue. After you receive the Holy Spirit in Acts 1.8. In Acts 1.8. And what he said. And now it's our turn. Okay. Then we afterward receive the Holy Spirit, okay, that Holy Spirit will 
will testify who? Jesus. You see here? Not we are unjust instrument. Okay? That Holy Spirit will enter in you and me. Okay? And that Holy Spirit will testify Jesus. We are we are an instrument. So now your job and my job so what? To testify Jesus. That's our job. Right? But without without the Holy Spirit in, inside of my heart, Punyuma and the Paracletus and outside, okay? Without inviting the Paracletus outside and within, inside and outside, then we cannot testify Jesus. Therefore, we have to learn the, the intimate, respectable relationship among the three persons of God. Intimate and close, respecting, what? Relationship among what? Among the three persons of God. Humble, that their humility, and what? Their, their characteristics. Humility. Humility means what? Humble attitude. Okay? And honoring each other attitude. Honoring each other attitude. And what else? Respecting each other attitude. Not bragging self attitude. Always considering others attitude. Not self seeking attitude. Unselfish attitude. Okay? So when we are in Christ and feel what the Holy Spirit, then our attitude will be changed toward the likeness of Jesus Christ. That was prescribed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love chapter. What? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You know? What, what those are? Love is what? Patient. Write it down. Love is patient. And love is what? Hmm? Love is kind. And love is not jealousy. Love is not jealousy. Write it down. Write down. Don't look at me. Write down. Copy down your note. My sister, don't open your Bible. Just write it down. Love is not jealousy. You see, all these characters are whose characters? Three persons' characters. Three persons of God's characters. And Jesus' character. Okay? Continue. Love is not bragging and is not arrogant. And love is not rude. You know, rude. You know, meaning rude. R U D E. Understand rude? Rude Rob is not rude. Love is not self seeking. Now, from this doctrine of Trinity here, I just give you the brief, brief 
doctrine of Trinity here that also can can apply to our Christian life here. I want to take a um, 10 minutes break, then we will continue more. I want to hear the gospel in my language. Yesu, 